Hi, I'm Brian from iWire, and today we're gonna to show you how to install our speed density and hybrid kits. Uh, and then after, we'll explain why you might choose one or the other, the benefits, what is speed density, and uh, any other common questions that come up with these. Probably the most important thing is talk to your tuner. They will have a opinion about this, and that will be your best answer to decide whether or not you should be going hybrid or speed density. So the first thing is, uh, if you don't already have the temp sensor for the speed density kit, you can purchase it from us. So inside, you'll get the weld on bung. We'll show you where to do that. And then uh, we've noticed that there's a slight change coming from AEM. This should be the older one, so you may have this one. If you have this one, this looks to be the newer one. They're both fine, they work the same. They're just slightly different. If you'll notice, this has a little red Loctite on it, whereas this one doesn't. In this case, we're actually gonna install this one to show you how to do it if you need a little Teflon tape to make sure the threads seal. A lot of the questions that we get are in relation to where should I put the sensor? Well, you want it as close to the throttle body as you can reasonably get, depends on the situation, but not inside the manifold. The reason is you're looking for the intake air temperature as it's entering the throttle body, not the air temperature inside the manifold. Those, those are different, they're different calculations. So in our case, for this top mount setup, we brought it close to here. The reason that we slid it a little bit over is because if you place it here, you might have a hard time getting the plug in. So with over here, it's gonna, the plug will fit pretty easily. Um, so if you're running a front mount, it's usually gonna do something like this. It's gonna come over across and you'll want it somewhere in that bend or closer to the throttle body and you'll actually weld it into the front mount piping. Same idea as applies here. You're just getting the sensor in the part that is close to the throttle body, but not in the throttle body itself. So we already had somebody weld on this bung that is included in the kit if you purchase it from us. Right there, just a little aluminum bung. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of Teflon tape. Like I said, there's two different varieties. If yours has a little red Loctite on it, then you don't need the tape because the Loctite functions the same as the Teflon tape. It's just to make sure you get a good seal. You don't want to leak here. Okay, good. And then we'll just thread it in. I've hand tightened it. Now I'm gonna tighten it with a wrench. Remember this is aluminum, so this isn't Gorilla tight, this is snug. The uh, other bung is also a 19 millimeter. So no matter what type you get, it's gonna be 19. Now that we have the sensor installed, we can run the wiring. Really simple. All you're gonna do is unplug the original MAF. In a lot of cases, you probably have a big rotated turbo, in which case you wouldn't have this inlet anymore and you wouldn't have a MAF at all. So this may, may look a little different in your situation, but just plug it in, nice click. And then we build these with military grade materials like Raychem and Tefcel. Both of them are designed to handle the heat of the engine bay. So you can pretty much route this however you'd like. And you can tuck it underneath and down along the engine and it will be just fine. So I'm gonna take a kind of basic routing. You can definitely get more fancy with it if you'd like. All right, and the other nice part about our kit is um, if you look at the standard sensor plug that you would get with this IAT, it's just a little cheap plastic and it doesn't have this nice outer surround that really makes sure that the sensor stays dry. You don't get any corrosion issues. This is a really high quality connector here. Plug it in, make sure it's secure. Clean up your wiring. Certainly adding a few zip ties here and there, depending on how you route it, would be good. Next step would just be to call your tuner and make sure you have an updated map for this setting in its current form. The ECU wouldn't know exactly what to do because the calibration of that intake air temperature sensor is a little different than the stock one. So make sure you consult your tuner before you start your car. I would not suggest driving on it without an updated map from your tuner. You could always have everything prepped, the map still plugged in, drive it to your tuner, 
they'll fi finalize it and then get your tune set up. In our case, we still have the stock mass airflow sensor in it. This is why a lot of times we do recommend the hybrid MAF setup. If your intake setup still has the MAF plugged into the air box or intake, then you would probably want the uh, hybrid kit because the hybrid kit can function either in pure speed density or in a hybrid form where in certain situations it's running off the mass airflow sensor and certain situations it's in speed density, but also gets the added effect of the plugging in the sensor to the harness so that there's not exposed down there. Now that that's installed, we're gonna show you how to install the hybrid one. So the difference between the hybrid and the standard is that the hybrid kit has a jumper to go back to the original mass airflow sensor. The reason that you'd probably wanna do that is because like in our situation, we still have the stock mass airflow sensor in play but it also gives the tuner options when they go to tune the car. They may get in into your car and for whatever reason your setup dictates that sometimes you want it to run on the mass airflow sensor and sometimes you don't. This gives you the option to do either. So essentially this gives you the best of both worlds assuming you still have a mass sensor in your setup. Installs just as easy. Unplug the stock MAF. Plug it into the jumper. Plug this harness back into the stock location and then route just like we did before. And just like the other adapter, we wouldn't suggest you plug it in until you're ready for a tune or you have the tune in your hands. Now that we have it installed, let's talk about a little bit about what speed density is. It's just another way to calculate how much air is getting into your engine. Obviously the amount of air dictates how much fuel you need and all the other factors that come into that are really based on how much air is in the engine. So, Standard math is great for a lot of applications because you're, you have a reading of direct airflow, but there are times where this becomes a little bit clunky, and in which case that's why we switch, switch to speed density. So basically what we're doing is taking a calculation based on intake air temperature and manifold pressure. When we do that, we can calculate how much air is physically in the engine, and therefore the ECU can adjust accordingly. And some, like I said, sometimes there are situations where you don't have a MAF or the MAF couldn't read accurately enough for it to work properly. So that's why we'd switch over to this sometimes. Now the cool part about the hybrid setup is that because your MAF is still in play, a lot of times you'll find that the drivability is a little better when the MAF is in play, but that's usually lower speed, lower RPM. So what the tuner will do, depending on your car, is they'll set it up so that sometimes it's using the mass airflow sensor and running based on a math calculation, and then it switches over to run off speed density. It's doing the math of the intake air temperature and manifold pressure to get a more accurate, a more accurate airflow calculation in other settings. All of these products are on our website, and you can also click the link in the description. When you're checking out, you'll see two different options. One is for top mount, one is for front mount. All that is is physically referring referring to whether or not you have a top mount because the length is a little bit shorter. It doesn't need to be as long. If you have a front mount, the sensor is a little bit higher. You need a little more room for the routing. The only other option is whether or not you want to buy the sensor from us or you already have it. If you already have the sensor, just make sure you have the weld on bump. Uh, in terms of tuning this, a lot of times when you do a speed density or hybrid setup, you want to upgrade the map sensor as well because you're going to want a little bit finer calibration. So take a look at our website. A lot of times the speed density or hybrid people will buy as a package with the map sensor. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and see our other installs.